Hello to all my friends and family and welcome. Welcome to Jim's 5am club. And today I come to you from a different location. I haven't been down here for a while and most people may not know where I am, but believe it or not, I'm on the banks of the Parramatta River, just across the road from my church parish. the church parish of St. John the Baptist. And what I want to do is take this opportunity to take you through a book summary and go on a, a walk and talk on this peaceful, glorious day. As you can see from the water, there's not a ripple there. There's not a breath of breeze. It's, um, it's mild, even though it's winter. Um, the weather is beautiful, absolutely beautiful for a walk. So what we'll do is we'll go for a bit of a walk and talk and go through a book summary entitled Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. So uh, Stephen in his book kicks off with a uh, quote to get us focused, to get us thinking, to get us all on the same page. And he suggests so boldly and so prophetically and so profoundly that the pain of not doing it is worse than the pain of doing it. So the pain of regret in many ways is worse than the pain of actually getting off your bum and doing something. So it's a call to action. To, uh, to do things. Do the work is the uh, title of the book and what the author here encourages us to do is to get going, to do the work. And this book here is all about learning how to deal with resistance. And another word for resistance is procrastination. We are surrounded by people who are always resisting. Uh, an example, you know, we've got COVID-19, we've got vaccines, and yet people will still come up with excuses and resist and procrastinate and uh, come up with excuses, which in their own mind, they've been able to justify, but it just doesn't make sense. When the prime minister of your country, the elected prime minister of your country, when the elected premier of your country, when the uh, archbishop of your church, of your faith, when the health, the health leaders across the board all advise you to get vaccinated for the group benefit of, uh, of everybody and people still resist it. It's just mind boggling. I just can't believe how immature people can be. But then again, that's my opinion. I grew up in a world where it was just right and proper to do your duty, to do what's right for everybody, where there was no I in team. And yet we have examples, lots of examples of people who are procrastinating, who are resisting with every ounce of their being, even though the government said, you, know, you, you can have the Pfizer, Pfizer vaccine. If you're 50 to 60, by all means, have the Pfizer vaccine for those who are resisting the AstraZeneca. And yet, <laughs> believe it or not, trust me on this, the people who were resisting AstraZeneca will also now come up with excuses to resist um, having the Pfizer vaccine. It's just human nature. But it's not all people. There's always a group. There's always a group of people who just live in fear and will do anything just to do nothing. So um, the author kicks off the book in terms of the formal points 
by saying that um, if your work or if doing something is important to you, that the fear of doing it will never ever go away. So there is fear in everything. You know, having fear is not the problem. You know, there, are th there are things that each and every one of us fear and those fears have been inherited uh, by, you know, from our parents, from our families, from our schools, from our work buddies, from our school friends, our teachers, you name it. Fears have come up and been instilled in us in many ways, from the news, from the TV programs that we've watched. There are so many things that have happened in our lives that have created these fears. So what the author here is saying is it's natural to have fears. But it's also important to understand that we are rational, we are intelligent beings, and we can look and see beyond these fears and understand what we need to do and just get it done. But some people just can't get past that um, past that first point, I guess, is, the, is, is, the, is, is one of the keys or one of the answers. Peter Fonda, as an example, he was an accomplished actor. He was a leader in his field. And yet, every single time that he was going to go up on stage, the fear of being in front of people overwhelmed him and he would throw up before going up on stage. So once again, the author here reminds us, the author reminds us that it's just natural to be worried about your performance. But we need to move on in spite of our fears because many of our fears, as we've said time and time again, are irrational, irrational fears. Um, and we need to move on in spite of our fears and what that moving on is called, is called courage. Courage is our ability to know and to accept that we are fearful that we're scared of something but we do it in spite of that fear and that's what that's what we call courage courage so if you want to be courageous do stuff even though you may be fearing it is the key answer from this uh, this book the author also says that there are some tricks that we can uh, we can incorporate and and use to help us and he said that what you shouldn't be doing is taking action and then reflecting on that action at the same time what we need to do and this is a, a hint this is a, a, a life hack that we inc can incorporate into our daily lives is that we need to give ourselves some temporal and physical distance before judging our work and before judging what we've done and why we've done it. So uh, something to think about. I've never ever thought about that before, but once again, this is the beauty of Jim's 5am club, that we can learn on the go and we can get to see the beauty of this city that surrounds us. Surrounds us. So what we're saying here is that before you judge what you've done, before you think too much about what you've done and start to regret it, the author here says that we need to have a physical and a temporal dist distance between what we've done. So we just need some time. Rather than reflecting on it immediately, just give it some time and then you're able to reflect on it. And another point, when in doubt, when you've got doubts, don't even reflect on it at all. Because reflecting on something that you doubt will just further the doubt. You will just feed that monster, the doubt monster, the FUD monster, the fear, uncertainty and doubt monster. And we're all surrounded. You, know, you just look around your Facebook community and you know who they are. There are people who just love love sowing seeds of fear uncertainty and doubt they just live they just live to post negativity on facebook and instagram 
They just love making people, people feel uncomfortable, scared and worried. So, uh, and this is what I do with uh, Jim's 5am club. I don't sit and think about what I've done. I don't sit and reflect on the posts that I do. All I do is, is vlog, publish, vlog. All of my vlogs, all of the vlogs that I've done are um, unedited. I don't sit there and look over it and take pieces out and add pieces in and change it to, to make it look good and sound good and be, and be as perfect as, can, as I can. All I do is vlog, publish, vlog. Vlog, publish, vlog. With very, very little reflection. Because at the end of the day, it's not my job, it's not my job to judge my work. My job that I've uh, taken on board is to publish, is to be the most prolific publisher of uh, self-help uh, vlogs that I know. And already I've got over a thousand. I've, uh, I've, become, I've become a leader in this little niche that I've uh, developed. And I hope that other people take it on board as well. Now, I don't want to be the only one, but what I do want to be is I want to be uh, the one that encourages you to do it, to pick up your phone, pick up your selfie stick and start vlogging about your experiences, about your knowledge, about your wisdom, about book summaries that you've read um, and to follow my lead and to enhance it and do better than me. So the last point to come out of this book from this author is that your work should be your biggest reward for your work. Now, I don't do this for likes because if I did it for likes, I would have stopped at about number 10 because you don't get likes when you do this sort of work that I'm doing. Hopefully, people are listening to it. Hopefully, people are gaining empowerment from the material that I'm putting forward and learning from it. Um, and if they don't, it doesn't matter. If they don't, give me, if they don't like it, it doesn't matter. But one thing for, for sure and for certain is what I'm doing here will, uh, will be here forever and ever in a day. It's going to be on YouTube or whatever other platforms there are. Um, once you've digitized something, it is immortal. It just hangs around for years to come. So hopefully my granddaughters, my daughters, my granddaughters, my wife, family, friends, I don't know who they are or who they're going to be, but hopefully they can benefit from it going forward. This is my legacy. This is my gift to you. And it's a gift that hopefully can keep on giving. So we always need to overcome tremendous resistance in order to do what we do. We're resisting ourselves all the time. How many times in the morning, you know, I'm about to get up, go for a swim, or get up and go and see a sunrise, or get up to go to work, or get up to go to, to do a vlog. And I'm always resisting the, uh, the, mind, the mind chatter is, uh, is unbelievable. We all have it. We all face the same challenges. But as the author says, is you just got to do it. You just got to get up and do it and think that you may not have another chance to do it. So uh, when you're down and about to give up, this is another little uh, life hack from the author. So when you're feeling negative, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling like you want to give up, the best thing to do is not to dwell on that, but to look at what you've accomplished already and let it drive you even more. Then ask yourself two questions. So whenever you're feeling down and you want to give up on life or on whatever, on your relationship, on your friendship, on your career, on your work, on your diet, whatever it is, whatever you're doing that is important to it, important to you and key to you, what you need to do is before you give up, before you do anything, the first thing the author here is suggesting is that you look back over the things that you've been able to achieve, your accomplishments, and hopefully that will drive you even more, knowing that you've done so much, you can do so more, and to ask yourself the two following questions. How badly 
do I really want this? And secondly, why? Why do I want this? And if you, by answering those two questions, it may give you the, uh, the propulsion, the momentum that you need to get over the little speed bump, the little hump, and get, keep you going. Anyway, let's finish up with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable. And most importantly, let's take a few hacks, a few hacks from this wonderful book that we've just been through, entitled Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield, and uh, incorporate them into our daily lives. So thank you once again for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club, coming to you from the banks of the serene and very, very beautiful Parramatta River. And I look forward to coming to you again from a different location with a different message, a message of empowerment, where we can be the wind beneath our wings, where we can uh, hopefully get through the morning, get through the day, and uh, incorporate the little learnings into our lives so that we can live, learn, and pass it on. So take care, everybody. Yasas, if you like ya, and we'll chat again. Bye for now.